about uh, something I've taught a lot on around here, and he's going to bring it out. I'm ringing a little bit if someone could. And uh, about how to keep your, your head and your heart right when you're going through things. You know, the difference between somebody, you've heard me tell this story before, and I'm going to tell it again tonight. And I think Brother Tony even tells it, which I think is funny because I told it before I heard it on, before he did it on TV. And uh, for the record, this is my first time through this lesson. Sometimes when preachers preach a lot, they think, well, oh, that's where he got that from. But for the record, except for we do very seldom do uh, classes like this, I just choose to get all my stuff from the Holy Ghost, and uh, I don't like to regurgitate anything. Because that's what it feels like if you try to preach somebody else's stuff. I mean, you can give information, but you can't give revelation. Revelation yeah. is something that you have and that other people can catch. Amen. Yeah. And uh, so there was this little. There was a. They were running this study, and they brought in a. They brought in a, a couple little boys, and uh, they filled this room about two foot full of manure. And they this they turned this one little boy in there, and. He turned around, looked at him, and had the most disgusting face. He said, what am I supposed to do with this? He said, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> Amen? And how many times that, now then they took him out and they took the same little boy into the same room with the same big pile of manure, and he just gets happy and gleeful. And he starts tearing up that poop from one end of the room to the other. Can you imagine that? And these people are looking at these, get these doctors strangely like, why is he so happy? And they came out and they said, why did you get so happy about all that poop? And he said, well, if there's that much poop in the room, there has to be a pony. And I've been wanting a pony forever. I mean, though, you go through situations, but how you see the situation. And for years around here, we have it up on our thing when you first start. It says, joy for the journey. I mean, you know, God's giving you joy for the journey. Yes. Romans 15, 13. And if you look like you're sucking on persimmons, I can tell you your joy meter's on zero, your strength's on zero, and you need to come get filled with the Holy Ghost, get meditating on the Word of God, pray up and get and get back in, because you're going to be like a, you know, you, we have a, different vehicles. And uh, Brother Tony's going to talk about this tonight, and I've talked about it for years. But if I get my truck, and I go somewhere, I can get just about wherever I set my mind to go, even if most people can't get there. It's lifted, it's got 35s on it, it's four-wheel drive. It can really get there. I can take Isaiah's go-kart that only has one tire that's slick, and it grabs, and on wet grass, I'm just going to sit there and spin. <laughs> or you can take an old car that's limited slip, and all you're going to do is slip and slide all over the place. So what am I talking about? A lot of people learn to activate one level of the Word of God or, or their faith or the joy or the Holy Ghost. And just one thing isn't usually going to be enough to take you all the way through the storm. And you can tell whenever you start running out of something because you start spinning out in that area. Come on now, I'm teaching. I'm going to give you all the Word on it here in a little while. And if you can find yourself, you know, how, how many know it, it doesn't take a rocket science to know, figure out when your joy is gone? If you wait too long, then you're going to have, some, have to have some crazy faith friends to come in and pull you up by your bootstraps and get you back on. But how many know God never didn't design you to have to go through that way every single time? And he knew that you'd run out of joy. That's why he said Romans 15, 13, that he's the God of hope. You can confidently anticipate God to do what he said he could do. Do you know how you go through something? By believing the promises of God are yes and amen. Even the old scenarios that I've been going through, every time it's been when the enemy's tried to convince me that it's hopeless and I'm not going to make my way through it. Every time that you become discouraged is because you stop believing, whether you want to say that or not, that God is who he says he is, can do what he said he can do, and you started losing hope. Now listen, I understand that God even loves us so much he realizes that we're human. He's every way human as us. And over Proverbs says, hope deferred makes the heart 
sick. Mm -hmm. There's going to be times that hope is deferred, but another, you shouldn't still let it lose your hope. Because right. it says when it came, when, when hope comes, it's as a tree of life. Mm -hmm. It puts down roots and it starts feeding things. It's kind of like David and Goliath when he whipped when he, David when he went to whip Goliath. He had already found God to be true with the lion. He found God to be true with the bear. Mm -hmm. Come on, I guarantee you, the first time you're face to face with the bear, your hope's going to try to jump up in the middle of your throat. <laughs> but he he whipped him. When you're face to face with a lion, I'm probably going to be looking for the nearest tree to climb. Then I realize they climb trees. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then you, you know, in today's society, you're going to look for the next slowest person and see if you can outrun that. <laughs> <laughs> you got to outrun bears. That's right. That's right. I got a cane. I can trip him. <laughs> <laughs> Joy of the Lord is my strength. Nehemiah what? 8.10. 8.10. Now, if the if the Lord knows that the joy is your strength, he says, Romans 50, he'll fill you with all joy and peace. That's Romans 50. Through the power of the Holy Ghost. Then why isn't everybody happy, happy, happy? Because they let the joy take around. The Bible says you can't put new wine in an old wine skin. Every time you open up yourself into the demonic realm, every time you let sin into your life, every time you sit there and let the open the door up to things you know you shouldn't be, you just open up that wine skin and it just pours all out. And every bit of anointing, every bit of the Holy Ghost pours out. And the next thing you know, you're miserable. Look like you're sucking on persimmons and life turns upside down. And you're singing that old song, everybody hates me, nobody loves me. I might as well go and eat worms. <laughs> Now, do most of y'all get that far down anymore? No. But we all get find ourselves usually. And so if you do, that's great. We've all been there. The key is to learn how to start closing the doors and start letting the Lord fill you full of his joy and his peace. Mm -hmm. How many know it takes faith to bring to go into the unseen realm and bring it into the seen realm? Yeah. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Come on, that's what the word of God says. But you have to be able to say and that word hope in the, in the word of God means what? I've taught it enough around here. So if I'm confidently anticipating, I'm not hoping, you know, if I know that God has spoke to me and the word of God says something, I can just wait, I, not just wait, I can stay and, and pull that thing, or I can put a demand upon it, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, Brother Tony's also going to teach about this tonight, and I've taught about it. But, you know, most people say, don't pray for patience. And I'm going to say, well, you're dumb because you're going to get worked on one way or the other. You might as well go in it prepared. But patience doesn't always mean what you think it means. Patience, patience means to be that you're persuaded. It means to persevere. You know, the Bible says that many will be won through your trials, and trials you'll come out looking like gold. Why? Because you're going to persevere through that thing, and many, the Bible says that many will be saved, maybe added to the work, to the church. Why? Because people see you persevere, and they say, man, that is not natural. There had to be something supernatural that helped me through that. How many like to persevere? How many is it on your top ten list? How many enjoy that season? Woo! I'm in the persevering season. Woo! I'm growing. It's great. But you do have to keep yourself full of the Word of God, standing on the promises of God, staying full of the joy of God. And you have to have a spirit of perseverance. That you're going, God, my God is not going to lie to me. No matter what it looks like in the natural, God is who he says he is. He can do what he said he can do. And you're not going to convince me otherwise. Mm -hmm. Now there's times that, you know, he may come a little close. And that's when you know you need to go and refill up your stuff. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because you're going to, the key is to go through the storm. Most people, I found out though, that somebody even like, you know, well, I'm going to just go ahead and really meddle good. we got lots of people online tonight. You know why most people don't really go through the storm and get set free? Because they like the demons they're playing with. When they leave, they get a missile. Mm -hmm. 
because there's an emptiness inside of us still fill it with the Holy Ghost. They don't fill it. They don't fill it back with the things of God. And seven more come move back in, and they get more in a mess than they were the first time. You can't get rid of something you like playing with. Boy, this is strong meat tonight. Come on, are you hearing me? So if you want to get free, you got to learn to shut those doors. And someone will say, what about after I've learned to shut them? And I've always said, well, then there, there is still principles you have to put in place. Do you know what? I take a daily uh, account of my joy level. I mean, no, what's some what's some PBisms that help you keep your joy tank in line? What's some of them that you guys have stuck with you throughout the years? They're all based on the Word of God for everybody watching. We'll give you the scriptures. You got to be thankful to keep your tank full. You got to be thankful to keep your tank full. What verse is that out of? Anybody know? Unless <laughs> you guys give an answer, I'll give it to you later after after the. Video tonight, if you don't have it right now. Is there a chapter connected to your belief? Yeah, that's another bit. You, if you, how many know you can't be hate, ha hateful <laughs> if you're thankful? Mm -hmm. I mean, to keep your joy tank full, you have to be thankful. Mm -hmm. If you're th the enemy tries to get you to think on every negative condition there is, mm -hmm. and I'm going to go ahead and say something else. Uh, and it's twofold, but I'm going to go ahead and share it for the, the ones here that are mature enough to swallow this. If you're not sure if you swallow it, you keep chewing, you'll get down eventually. <laughs> the Bible tells us to go to the highways and byways to compel them to come. That means we're around every kind of person there is, whether they're, they're, they're happy, unhappy, upset, upset. But see, the Bible called you to be a what? Overcome. He did call you to be an overcomer. That's it's right. An ambassador. ambassador of Christ. <laughs> and so you're to be a thermostat, not a thermometer. The world today is full of thermometers. Everybody can tell you what their world is like around them, what people are like, but they're not going out and changing the thermostat, changing the temperature. God has called you to be a thermostat. But whenever that world starts affecting you, how many know sometimes you can stay in the heat long enough and it'll start messing with the thermostat? And then it's time to go and recalibrate, mm -hmm. get filled full of the Word of God, and then go back out. Not that God didn't call you to be there, but there's a, some seasons when, you know, if you surround yourself with negative people talking about negative things all the time, I call them joy suckers. Mm -hmm. They'll suck the joy right out of you. Yeah. And we're going to look at that through the Word of God. I, this ain't just what I say. This is just my prelude to get your spirit ready to receive what God has to say tonight. Those that know me know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you, for years it really wrestled, bothered me because I thought, well, Lord, if I just stay around happy people, I ain't going to win the ones because they said everybody that needs you ain't happy. <laughs> they're all miserable. <laughs> all walking around like they're looking like they're sucking on persimmons. And, what do you mean you want me to stay? He said, the ones that are in close fellowship with you need to be in close fellowship with me. You don't let the lost person into your inner circle. Right. Jesus ate with the sinners and the publicans. And, but, but let me tell you, he didn't leave them that way. He didn't keep going back to the same bar every day. He went there once and they changed their life and then they came with him. He didn't keep going to them. Right. Mm -hmm. Come on, are you hearing me? Mm -hmm. But those aren't weren't the ones he was hanging out with that he, that he had conf confidence in. He had 12 disciples and he had three in the inner circle. Those were the ones that he really spoke to. And even they didn't understand half the stuff that was going on with him. <laughs> he took them to the top of the mountain with them. They're like, let us move the temple. God is here. There's some miraculous just happened. We saw we saw the prophets. They came down and talked with you. He's like, listen, man, you all chill out. <laughs> and even they disappointed him in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, can't you even stay awake with me? For one hour as he prayed and interceded. And people are still going to let you down. But I noticed that Jesus was careful who he let into his inner circle. And sometimes people let all the wrong people in the inner circle. And they would just suck the life and the joy right out of them. 
Amen? So that doesn't mean you go into work tomorrow and go, I can't talk to you. I can't talk to you. No, but you better not be asking them for uh, advice. You better not be, they better not be your confidant. It better be someone that's spirit-filled, full of the Word of God, that's speaking into you. That's what the Word of God says. Surround yourself with a multitude of counselors, word with <laughs> Christian believers. We can give you all the word on that. Psalm 10, Proverbs talks about it. Depth. I thought about it for two years. Amen? Amen. But I want to tell you a secret that most of you already know, but I don't know if many of you thought about it. It's easier to talk with a heathen than it is a spirit-filled believer. Because <laughs> it can just roll off the tongue and you can say whatever you want. I've just got such freedom. <laughs> yeah, to talk like an idiot. <laughs> Speak word curses. And I'll agree with you. <coughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, you, you deserve that. You know what? A true believer won't tell you. They, they're not going to really listen to what your opinion. They're going to say, well, let's get together and see what the Word of God has to say about the matter. Because the Word of God is going to be the only thing that helps you overcome, helps you get through the storm. Mm -hmm. Anything else is built on sinking sand. Mm -hmm. Come on, that's what the Bible says, right? And sometimes, some of you are like me. The longer it goes on, the more you'll start getting, you'll start closing yourself. Oh, I don't really like this. I was once, but I had a season like this. You start close. I don't do this anymore. I won't change that. I had it in years. But you'll start closing yourself in. The more the pressure comes, the more you'll start mm -hmm. closing the walls in. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, even when Jesus was at his most difficult time, he didn't go it alone. And he said, I have to go away that I can send a comforter unto you. You need the Holy Ghost. He's like, I got the Holy Ghost. I don't need nobody else. Well, Jesus did. He's the Son of the living God. So don't you believe you need it? Come on, are you with me tonight? So, those are some nuggets I want you to be thinking on. If you'll play the video, kill the lights. This video series based on the book, Through the Storms, Help from Heaven When All Hell Breaks Loose. In this session, we're going to be talking about the four-wheel drive Christian. I don't know how much you know about four-wheel drive, but um, uh, a few years ago, my wife and I spent 10 months living in Colorado. And we've lived for 34 years now in the state of Oklahoma. And we just really have never had need of, well, maybe a couple times that could have come in handy, but uh, we've really not had too much need for four-wheel drive vehicles. But when we lived in Colorado for 10 months, we had some storms, some blizzards that were um, pretty massive. They dropped a lot of snow in a very short period of time. And a couple of the times we were flying to meetings and we had to drive from Colorado Springs up to the Denver airport. And I remember driving, we did not have a four wheel drive vehicle. And uh, so we we're just in a conventional car. And uh, I mean, we were slipping and sliding and trying to avoid sliding off the road because of the heavy snow and how slick the roads were and getting stuck. And as I was driving very tentatively down the road, pretty slowly, these guys with Jeeps and trucks and SUVs that had four-wheel drive vehicle, you know, four-wheel drive, man, they were just blowing right past us. And, you know, they had all this confidence and uh, because all four of their tires were getting traction on the road. And so I uh, saw and really came to appreciate the value of four-wheel drive vehicles. 
Now, I want to talk about the four-wheel drive Christian. And by that phrase, four-wheel drive Christian, I'm using that obviously metaphorically to describe the idea that God doesn't just want us having one tire getting traction in our spiritual lives. We need to be getting all the traction we can from the whole word of God. And one person made the statement one time, they said that if the only tool that you have in your toolkit is a hammer, it's amazing how much everything looks like a nail. And, you know, we know that for a toolkit to be complete, you need a lot of different tools. And if you just have one or two tools, you're pretty limited on what you can do. And, and if you just know one or two Bible verses or one theme of the Bible, um, you know, I mean, you can do some things with that. That's wonderful. But the Bible says, Jesus himself said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, not just an isolated word, a selected word. And it's okay if you have some special verse that is really meaningful to you and the Holy Spirit's impressed you, maybe what you call a life verse. That's great and wonderful too, but I'm simply saying that in addition to really appreciating maybe a favorite scripture or two, we need to know the whole word of God what Paul called the whole counsel of God. And so I want to talk to you today about being a four-wheel drive Christian. And I'm basing this from James chapter 1, beginning in verse 2. And what we're going to see here is that James gives us four spiritual principles, or what we might even call four spiritual forces. And so I'm likening that to the four-wheel drive Christian. James says in James chapter 1, verse 2, he says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and entire, or perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given him. I want you to notice that James introduces us to four spiritual concepts, four spiritual principles. Number one, he says, count it all joy. Joy is a very important spiritual force. He says, count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials, different kinds of trials, knowing that the trying of your faith, and how many of us know that faith is important? My goodness, uh, it's huge. Knowing that the trying of your faith produces, and then he gives us the third spiritual force, produces patience. And that word patience, we would probably be more likely to call it endurance, perseverance. And then he said, and if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and God gives it to you liberally and so on. So we want to talk about these four spiritual principles, four spiritual concepts or four spiritual forces, if I can use that term. We want to talk about joy. We want to talk about faith. We want to talk about patience. And we want to talk about wisdom. And I want you to know this. Uh, if you're going through the storms of life, you need to be a four-wheel drive Christian. Don't try to make it through the storms of life just holding on to one spiritual concept, but get all the tools, all the weapons that God has for you from his word. The Holy Spirit certainly may uh, have you to focus on one specific promise or something. And that's good if that's a source of encouragement. But let me just encourage you to, to really look at the whole counsel of God's word. James started with the idea of joy. And so let's talk about that a minute. Uh, joy is what gives buoyancy to our faith. Uh, joy, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I have found that when I face adversity, when I face a storm, the first thing that gets threatened is my joy. And, and James said, count it all joy when you fall into these different kinds of trials. I don't know about you, but that is so 
uh, counterintuitive because our flesh, our un, the unrenewed part of our mind or our thinking, uh, when you fall into a big trial or a big problem, there's a tendency, wow, I really feel sorry for myself and, and you know, uh, you know, to be doubtful and skeptical and uh, upset and things like that. So to count it all joy is really a stretch sometimes, <laughs> and, but it's something that we do by faith. But let me encourage you, do not let the trials of life rob you of your joy. Uh, this is a journey that we're on, and we're going to endeavor to go all the way through this problem to our destination to the other side. And I'm going to tell you what, you're going to enjoy the journey far more if you can hold on to your joy in spite of the problem. Let me just mention, there's a big difference between joy and happiness. Uh, happiness very often relates to what happens, H-A-P-P. Did you notice that happy and happen all start with the same four letters? And joy has to be something that is different than circumstances. I believe what the Bible says when it says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And also in Psalm 1611, the Bible says, in your presence is fullness of joy. So don't look to the world to give you joy. Don't look to the circumstances to give you joy. Look to God to give you joy and let that joy be your strength. Proverbs 17, 22 says, a joyful heart is good medicine. So, you know, even physically, joy has a, a physical health benefit uh, to our life. A joyful heart is good medicine. So I just believe that joy is huge. Joy is important. And we need to maintain joy even when circumstances are trying to rob us of joy. Uh, we maintain joy because we believe that God is going to bring us out successfully on the other side. We maintain joy because we believe that even when the world or other people or the devil bring us bad things, we believe that God is going to give us good things. I, I love the story of the little boy. A psychologist was doing an experiment to see how children reacted to adversity, and he got this one little boy, and, uh, you know, they wanted to come up with an experiment to, it wouldn't be harmful, but would test the, the, the little boy and how he responded to a negative circumstance. So they went out and got a whole bunch of horse manure from a farm and put it in this little room, and they brought the little boy into this room and and observed him through one of those one-way mirrors, and they noticed that this little boy who had a reputation for being very cheerful, uh, they noticed that he began to be happy, he began to be joyful, actually began to celebrate, and actually kind of got down and played around in the manure just a little bit, and the psychologist, he made his notes and observations, and then opened the door and and did a little interview with the little boy. He said, tell me, why were you so happy in there? And the little boy said, with all that manure in there, I just knew there had to be a pony somewhere. And so, you know, that's a great attitude. I'm not sure that story is true. Somebody may have just made that up. But, but it illustrates a great point is that we need to look for good things and we need to have uh, a joyful expectation of God coming through and helping us through every situation. But the journey will always be better if you keep your joy. Uh, James said, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, knowing that the trying of your faith. Well, faith is the second tire that we have to keep spinning to keep traction in life. Uh, the Bible says we live by faith. We are justified by faith. We stand by faith. We walk by faith, and we are saved by faith. I want you to know the Bible even says without faith, it's impossible to please God. So we want to make sure that we keep our faith, our trust, and our reliance in God. 
And, and we know that the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So sometimes we're hearing a lot of negative things from the circumstances and the, the situations of life. And we need to make sure that we have time and take time to hear what is God saying to me right now. And thank God for the Bible that we can go through and find his wonderful promises and, and let that build our faith uh, during challenging times. Faith isn't just for the good times of life. Faith is for the challenging times of life also. The Bible talks about the spirit of faith, the shield of faith, the joy of faith, the breastplate of faith, the work of faith, the words of faith, the fight of faith. Some of you are in that right now. The fight of faith, the assurance of faith, even the prayer of faith. So let me encourage you, don't lose your faith in the midst of adversity. The third tire that James identified was that of patience. He said, let uh, the trying of your faith works or produces patience and let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, lacking nothing. Let me just tell you this, patience in, in the Bible, in the New Testament here, is not a passive word. It doesn't mean that you just passively sit down and say, que sera, sera, whatever will be, will be. Uh, no, patience here is, is really referring to a very tough endurance. It is a perseverance. It is a refusal to quit. Uh, it literally means to abide under. It means that you stay put, trusting God. Uh, you don't run away from the pressures and the problems. You, you face valiantly and boldly the pressures and problems of life and refuse to quit. The Bible says it's through faith and patience that we inherit the promises. If everything happened immediately, we would not need patience. But we do because some situations can go on longer than we would like, but we need to not grow weary in our faith. And finally, he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Wisdom is the ability to see things the way God wants us to see them and to make accurate and precise application of our faith. Let me give you just a few special thoughts about wisdom here. Uh, that are very important. Wisdom, the Bible says, causes us to dwell safely and be secure without fear of evil. Wisdom enables us to walk in the way of goodness and to keep to the paths of righteousness. When you receive wisdom's influence, the Bible says, length of days and long life and peace will they add to you. And the Bible says wisdom will cause you to fear God and depart from evil and that it will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. So let me encourage you, uh, don't try to navigate through the storms of life unless you're operating in a four-wheel drive form of spirituality. Count it all joy. Maintain your faith. Uh, uh, persevere with endurance, with patience, and as you need to, and, and we all need this, ask God for wisdom, and he'll give it to us freely. And as a four-wheel drive Christian, uh, we'll have a lot better ride, a lot better journey through the storms and the difficult seasons of life. Amen. And if you're from the Ozarks, oil drive means something totally different. There's a lot of things about it. And uh, if you don't have the right kind, you're not going to get very far. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we've been teaching on this right here for years. And do you know, we can all go to the same gym every day. And I've asked you, well, have you been going to the gym? 
Yeah, I've been going to the gym. Oh, yeah. And some people are seeing results and you're not seeing results. Why am I not seeing results? Well, just because you went to the gym didn't mean you did anything there. You have the information, you can go there. I mean, you can say, I've got faith. Well, you got the weights, but until you start lifting the weights, this faith started being built. And the more you lifted those weights, the stronger your faith got. The more you, and the more you persevered. How I many you know that muscle failure happens when you're at a 10? That means when you've exhausted your muscles on the last set and you can't hardly get no more in there. Muscle failure. Ah! And now you've really got to persevere. But through that one little set, you get the most out of it. Come on. And faith is the same way. But how I many you know? Anybody ever you went to the gym miserable? <laughs> and you can still, and if you don't get your attitude right, you can still leave there miserable. <laughs> but if you get your attitude right, there's things called endorphins. I call them. I'm gonna hold this to the spirit, bring it to the spiritual realm. And they kick in, and you actually usually leave there better than what you was, even though you may not exactly enjoyed all the process. But you really like the results. That's the same way in the spirit realm. See, a whole lot of people have the information. In America, there's an overload of information. But there's very few people that have the revelation. You know, most people, we don't do a good job keeping our joy tank full. Number two, most people don't really operate in faith. And then, and then if you, you know, if you get spin your tires once or twice, you just give up your stuff. I mean, you got to have that. And the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, come to your father without their faith, waver. If you really don't believe what you're asking for, you're never going to get what you're seeking for. Right. Amen. And this ain't, the thing it also is, is it's not a bless me gospel. The thing is, God, what is your plan? What is your purpose? Amen. See, when you can believe for his idea, it always comes through. And when we studied all through Proverbs, the Bible said, get wisdom, get understanding. How I many of the more wisdom and understanding you get, the more you, you have to pray and stand on the word of God? Mm -hmm. The devil will tell you, we don't learn nothing, you don't have to be accountable for that. Stupid, you're going to all be saved by the judge, saying, judged by the same God at the end of the days. Don't be an idiot. You're just cheating yourself out of the goodness of God in the, in the land of the living. Come on. Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Bible says, study to show yourself approved to workmen rightly dividing the word of truth. He didn't say call preacher every time you need the word divided. <laughs> Not that I won't. I'll take your call. I'll talk to you. But how many know you have to understand it? You have to break it down. You have to ask. Them. Right. You know, when you're four-wheeling, all four wheels got to be digging. Got to be pulling. Joy pulling, faith pulling. You know, I've seen people that get on the faith train, they lose all their joy and all their sense. Ain't got no wisdom. I'm standing in faith. God's going to see me through. I'm going to get a promotion at work. Although I'm late every day, I show up. I, don't, I only do half my job and I play on my phone. But God, I'm standing in faith. God has laid the wealth, the wealth of the wicked for the righteous. I have my scripture. I'm praying for it. God will see me through. But it's not working, Pastor. I don't know why. It's just not working. Well, wisdom says, you know, that we're supposed to work as unto the Lord. That's just one thing. Come on. One little tidbit of wisdom. I mean, we can go on a million things. Just miserable. And the devil, I'm just going to, he's really good at always painting the grasses green on the other side. You get over there, you're choking on the dry dust. Mm -hmm. If you're going to persevere, you've got to find out what the Word of God says. Believe it. Until you see it. And the Bible says that by his stripes you were healed. <laughs> past tense. Isaiah says by his stripes you are healed. One looks to the cross, one looks back to the cross. 
What's that mean? Either here or heaven, I'm going to be healed, but I am healed, resisting sickness. I don't see it. That's not what the doctor said. They told me, stop being idiots. Stop being wishful thinking. I'm not wishful thinking. I'm going to the doctor. I'm taking their advice, but I'm putting my faith in Jesus Christ. Come on. Some of you are with me. I feel like I'm preaching hard, but I don't want to preach hard. I was pretty excited about tonight. But, you know, I really find most people go into a situation in two-wheel drive to in today, especially in America, and the first time they spin out, they just pull over to the side of the road and say they're done. And then they'll see somebody that's actually engaged in four-wheel drive, and then they'll spend more time complaining because they ain't got what they think somebody else has got. When they all got the same vehicle, they all got the same, they all got the same capabilities. And usually you don't know what the other person's persevered. If they're making it easy, that's because they've got a little, they, they put a little traction on the tires. They, they actually lifted some weights. Are you with me? Are you always going to be perfect? No. Are you, is it going to be times you're always going to be sucked out of the yes? That's why he put stuff in the Word that said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Cast my care, your cares upon me, for I care for you. Because there's going to be times you feel that way, but how do you know? Because you're taking an accurate account of yourself. You see, my joy meter's on zero. I will not make it through. I'm about to spin out. i got to go get some joy. And then you come to the house of God with an expectation. As a matter of fact, you don't have to come to the house of God. You can do it in your house. But you can also come to the house of God because it's a place where he promises to do it. And you can put an expectation upon, upon the man of God in the house and say, I need some joy. And he'll say, Woo, I'm glad somebody wants something. <laughs> I preached on this many years ago. The Holy Spirit flashed it back to me at the other church. There was a great outpouring. Because I said, you know how many people come up and ask me for joy? Almost zero. I've got to almost like throw, put it out there like a candy dish before somebody wants some. When the Bible says, man, you come unto me and I'll ask and cast your care. He said, I'll fill you with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what he said. When the last time you said, I want more of the Holy Ghost. Come on. We're going to be talking about most of this thing because you're not going to go through these last days and through the storm without being full of the Holy Ghost, full of the joy of God. And you got to be full of faith. And then you got to have wisdom. That means you got to have enough word in you to know what's right and what's wrong, what to stand on and what to spit out. Come on. You can't go by what somebody else says. You got to go by what the Word of God says. And if you're getting advice from somebody, they better be in the Word more than you are. Today's society, everybody's got an opinion. You know how many people's opinion counts? Zero. Zero. Not even yours. It matters what the Word of God says. I don't think that's fair. That tells me you've been listening to the devil for a very long time. This ain't right. He's been all on your shoulder screaming for for a very long time, you haven't picked up your Bible, you haven't prayed, and about the only time you might feel is when you're here. So that means to tell me you need to change who you're listening to. Amen. How do you know that? Because I was you once. And I did all the things I'm telling you, and it transformed my life. And I'm still going through things, but I don't go through them like I used to. Amen. And if he gets my goat, gets my joy for a little bit, I don't let him have it very long because there's people depending on me to be the man of God that God's called me to be. And I've got to have something that I gotta have something to give when you need it. I can't go, wait a minute. I fell in the rabbit hole this week. I don't got no joy to give. I got, got no peace. And actually it's not me giving it, it's the Holy Ghost flowing through me. I just gotta keep myself in such a way sanctified through the power of the Holy Ghost that's sanctified and holy enough for him to flow through. But that means keeping my joy tank, joy tank full. You know, I have a million reasons to be upset about every day that you can't imagine. But I choose joy. I choose faith. There's been some times and over the last year I've done better than others. But I guess what? I work the word and the word works. 
Are you putting demand upon the word? Are you a four-wheel drive Christian? Or are you like Isaiah's go-kart with one tire just spinning around the hill? <laughs> Get out there in the wet grass and it's over. <laughs> I'm not saying that to beat on you. That is not what tonight's about. Tonight is about recognizing it and start putting in the word of God and practicing it. A full drive is only as good as it doesn't even do any good until you put it in gear. Mm -hmm. I'll stop. Some of you are listening. Some of you are trying about to go to sleep. Some of you are trying to outweigh me. Yeah. That makes me want to preach like Paul until you fall out the window of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know that story, look it up. I'm not. So let's do our sheets real fast. Lord, got plenty of time. Concluding thought, don't be a one-dimensional believer. How I many know, listen, some people are only ankle deep. Some people, you know, they just in a, they put their stuff in the sand and the first thing that comes along knocks them out. You got to be more than a one-dimensional believer. Utilize as many of the tools and resources that God has given you in order to live an effective and victorious Christian life. And if you've been around here very long, I believe we've done a really good job of giving you a lot of tools. And we're going to continue doing that. If you don't know them, we have like 400 and some odd videos online. And I have all the worksheets to go with it. And you can get what you want if you'll need it. If you're online watching, just go to the website. You'll find all that you need there. Questions for reflections and discussion. Number one, how complete is your understanding of the diverse spiritual resources that God has made available to you? You need to ask yourself that question. Are you accessing and cultivating these various spiritual attributes in your life? Are you really accessing them and applying them in your life? If not, make your mind up today to do it. If you are, See if you can dig in a little deeper. How many know it's better to be prepared for the storm than have to get ready in the storm? Amen. So go ahead and just dig a little deeper. You say, well, I'm doing fine now, Pastor. We ain't talking about what you're doing now. Come on. Is there a specific area where you feel you're especially strong? This is where I hear a lot of people go, I like joy. Yeah. <laughs> I like joy. I like joy too. If you just eat cake, you're going to end up seeing Brother Jason over there sooner or later. <laughs> if you don't know what he does, he's a physical therapist. Is that the right word I'm yeah. So he'll twist you up and make you hurt in all kinds of new ways. <laughs> is there an area where you believe you need significant growth? If there is, write it down tonight while the Holy Spirit's dealing with you. And don't let the enemy beat on you. Just decide you're going to start growing in that area. Number two. This is very vital, I believe, right now. Ask yourself honestly, what is the level of joy in your life? On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate your joy? Mm. 1 being you're, you pulled yourself up by the bootstraps to get here and you've been, you've been sucking on the back of dirty insoles all week. <laughs> 10 being you're full of the Holy Ghost going around singing top of your lung and you're just ready to give it. You can't wait for somebody to ask for something so that you can impart the Holy Ghost into that. Where are you at? Most people are honest and say somewhere probably in the middle or on one lane you're adding in. But, uh, you know, I believe God wants us to pretend to be completely full. Are you experiencing its strength, vibrancy, buoyancy, and boost in your life? When you're full of joy, it puts a pep in your step. I ain't talking about this fake giddy stuff, you know. I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost joy. 
It just, you know, it can take you from being in a bad mood. It can take you from whatever else when you get tapped into it. So you'll start laughing in the devil's face. You make you swing out on a corn stalk over hell and spit in the devil's eye. Come on, so I'll say it again. Some of you didn't get it. Yet. See, even that just thinks. But you know what? It just you become bold and brazen, and you're walking on. You're almost walking on water. How I many? I think Peter was full of joy. He was probably elated when he stepped out of the boat. But at least he stepped out of the boat. No, the rest of them even had enough faith to get out of the boat. And when he started sinking, he reached up his hand, and guess what? His daddy God met him. Some people always want to focus on, oh, he lost his faith. He went down. I bet he was still really joyful when he got up back on the water again. <laughs> that was gross. Woo. Praise God, he's with me. <laughs> You ever think about that? I, mean, I thought he was joyful. I mean, he was joyful when he got out. He was even more joyful after that. <laughs> if your joy level seems down, would David's prayer, restore to me the joy of your salvation, be applicable or helpful? I've prayed that a lot of times. If you need that, just pray. You don't have to wait till later. Just pray it under your breath right now and mean it and expect the Lord to meet you. Amen. Number three. What do you think of Smith Wigglesworth quote? Does everybody know who Smith Wigglesworth is? Yeah. Okay. He was an evangelist in the early 19th century. He got like, he got arrested in Germany because he literally shut down every hospital there. They got everyone was healed in every hospital in Germany. They came to arrest him for disrupting public service. What a great thing to be arrested for. Amen. Amen. What do you think Smith Wigglesworth's quote? Great faith is the product of great fights. You know, this is great when you're reading about it for somebody else. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he had a great faith. He, he raised people from the dead. Oh, he had this disease. He could hardly walk. But he could get up and minister and do this and do that. That's great when it's somebody else, right? That's really encouraging. Until you start trying to get your story. Your fight. Great testimonies are the outcome of great tests. Anyone here like tests? No. <laughs> but I've made my mind up that I'm going to keep my joy in. Mm -hmm. And I realize when I'm getting low, because I'm human and I do get low. And sometimes I've even had to call in air support. Because I realized that, hey, I need something. This is getting serious. My joy level's empty. I'm running on empty. And I'm not seeing clearly. I need some help. And if you've never been there, you'll soon be there. And you need to remember that. But maybe even be better now. Because sometimes in your early stages, you can just forget even going there. If you'll start wanting to take an inventory of your joy level, your faith level, and start adjusting it accordingly. How are you? If you start finding yourself talking about issues, problems, how the devil's coming at you nine million different ways, I'm here to tell you you're about to on a collision course of being on joy empty and hitting the wrong way of the door. And some of you will come up talking to me, and I'll just be like, "It's about to get fun for them." <laughs> and some of you I tell, and some of I try to tell, and you. But, you know, and you'll tell me, oh, yeah, I've still got faith, but it's this. I've got faith, but this. Well, your, 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 your mouth is saying something different, and your heart's saying something completely different. And uh, we all get there. Hope I'm going fast. I hope you're getting the nuggets I'm throwing out. Great triumphs can only come out of great trials. Have you experienced the truth of these statements in your own life? Amen. If so, How? Write them down. I, I really encourage you guys to write them down. Because when the devil comes around, you need to write them down so you encourage yourself. Because if he did it then, he'll do it now. Amen. Number four, in the past, what did you think about the role of patience? Most everybody I ever talked to until I started teaching on it. I don't pray for patience. I don't want no patience. Eh, they all said the dumbest things. Mm -hmm. It's a fruit of the Spirit. Why don't you want it? You want to be walking like a heathen all your life in it? I want to be angry. 
I will be quick to be angry. I don't want no patience. I don't want no perseverance. I want to throw in the towel every time it gets hard. I mean, do people not realize what they're saying? The devil sure does. Come on, are you hearing me? Have you seen it as something passive or active? Most people just see it as something that happens. Surah, surah. It'll be what it'll be. I have survived. How I many know God didn't call you to survive? He called you to try. Amen. Heaven's not for survivors, it's for overcomers. Amen. That's what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. And so then, I mean, it needs that you start looking at patience as an active tool, an active engine. Of the Holy Ghost. You ain't going to get my goat. You ain't going to wear me down. I'm full of the Holy Ghost in fire. And I've got my joy tank full. And I refuse to give in, give up, shut up, or sit down. Based on information given in this chapter, this video clip we just did, how is your patience when you face adversity? You need to be brutally honest with yourself here. You don't have to show anybody else. You ain't got to talk good about anybody else. Uh, you, we ain't counselors around here. The Holy Ghost is a counselor. I will counsel with you, but you need to counsel with the real one first. And you need to ask yourself, how is it? Because if once you're truthful, then you can start working on it. There was a season that I knew my patience wasn't really any good. Well, it was good, but it wasn't great. But I didn't want to talk about it, and I didn't want to work on it. I just wanted to, let's talk about joy again, God. Let's talk about faith. I don't want to talk about patience. He said, I want you to learn to persevere. I want you to learn to persevere so that whenever people look at you, they can see you, me in you because ain't nobody else can survive the pressure that you just came through. You operate in a persevering endurance and exhibit spiritual stamina. Is your faith spiritually tough? A lot of people's faith is great as long as it ain't really tried. <laughs> they got faith for everything. They'll pray for you, pray with you, everything, till it's tried. <laughs> you just see them, they just have a complete come apart. How I many know you got to be tough? I mean, oh, God's tougher. You don't hear me talk about this much, but your faith's got to be tough. you got to believe he is who he says he is. He can do what he said he can do. Come on. Well, it takes a tough person to overcome some things. When the doctors give you some of them reports, you ain't got time to go get ready. Do you have a steadfast patience that bears up under hardship and does not lose heart or courage under trials? This is something that has to be earned, worked through, and developed. It is not something you can pray and just you say, all things are possible to believe. I don't pray for it. Well, I don't know if you would want to experience what you have to go through then if you want to get it that fast. Are y'all hearing me? But how many can see that something God wants us? As we come through these days, we need to have this stuff down as old hat, I believe, so that we can just be more than conquerors and just keep rolling. Just keep rolling in these last days. Amen? Amen. Number five. Explain why trials in and of themselves don't make you a more spiritual person. I mean, no, it's not the trial that makes you spiritual. Oh, I've been going through it. I went through one thing than the other thing. Oh, the devil's been after me. I must be a superstar. <laughs> I hear it all the time. Oh, my 
No, it's how you respond to them and how you go through them that make that makes you look and act more like Jesus that matters. 99% of them people brought it on themselves. And I don't mean that negatively. I know it sounds harsh, but it's not how I'm feeling this. Or, or on the other thing, honestly, I just don't know no more. I see a lot of that. That's how Grandma talked. That's how I'm going to talk. And I read First Peter one time, and I didn't know something. <laughs> Explain why trials in and of themselves don't make you a more spiritual person. Have you ever known of someone who, because of the way they responded to problems, actually declined in their spiritual life? Yes. When the pressure comes, it's going to do one or two things. It's going to Alex, it's going to either going to elevate you into things of God, or you're going to let the enemy take you down to the bottom. There's no middle ground. There's no gray ground. It's either all for God or nothing when the pressure test comes on. And if you find yourself going the other way, the great news is you learn some tools tonight. You can play and say, I ain't going all the way to the bottom. I'm switching this back up. I'm going to start growing in this. Amen? Amen. Have you ever created or prolonged a storm because of a lack of wisdom on your part? If everybody is honest in here, you would raise your hand. I'll read it again. Have you ever created or prolonged a storm because a lack of wisdom on your part? My hand's up. I know I have. But I'm here to tell you, you're not going to get me to do that again. I learned. Stupid once, yes. Not, not moron forever. <laughs> you know, and I learned. Listen. You'll, you'll keep doing stupid things until you reach your top of your pain level. I can show you that in the Word of God. I've showed it years ago. Most of you hopefully remember that some of that teaching. But I learned that stupid hurts. <laughs> and so I started, I didn't have to wait. You know, listen, when you put your hand first on a hot stove, it tells your brain that it's about to get burnt and you need to take it off. And if you take it off fast enough, you may even get by with very little or at least just a small thing. But you can leave it there just a little while longer where you don't think it's doing much hurt. And next thing you know, you got third or third degree burns all over. Somebody, somebody said, what's that got to do with anything? Well, your brain learned the first time it was hot and you chose to ignore it. And then stupid hurt. Come on. I've been stupid hurt a lot. Don't be taking it against yourself. I, but I learned. See, I started learning what that felt like. And then I started more. And then I got to the point I recognized what the stove was. I read enough word. I'm like, hey, if I go over there, that's going to hurt. We will not even go near the stove. <laughs> And then I recognized the house that the stove was in, and I didn't even go in the house. <laughs> Come on, I'm teaching right now. Amen. But as my as I started getting more sensitive to the leading of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, I started realizing that's going to hurt. Don't go there. Blessings are this way, curses this way. Remember, all through Proverbs, that's what he said: blessings and curses. Mm -hmm. You choose your path. Y'all remember all that to the in depth teaching. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about right here. So if you don't know a lot of the word, you need to commit to learning a lot, to reading a lot. But you'll have wisdom to know to keep your hand off the fire. Y'all with me still? Are there specific ways? Oh, here, have you ever recognized the need for wisdom and made it a point to pursue wisdom? If you haven't made a point tonight to pursue wisdom, I made a point years ago. I'm still pursuing, pursuing wisdom, and I'll be pursuing it to the day I, he takes me home. I've never learned it all. I'm not going to learn it all, but I am smarter than I was last year. I hope to be smarter even next year on it. But the more I, the more I learn, the better man I am. 
Are there specific ways your life has gone better because you embraced God's wisdom in your life? I talked about one here a couple weeks ago. I'm going to try to keep this simple. I could talk about some deep things, but then I might have some of you in tears tonight. I some of you responding, so I'll go with that. Let's get right into the night. <laughs> Y'all remember when I talked about you should be a speed demon, and the Holy Ghost used to warn me when there was cops, and I'd slow down, you know, and all of a sudden, after about a year or so, he stopped doing that, and I started getting tickets, and I'm like, well, why aren't you telling me no more? And he got on me about obeying all the laws of the land. Mm -hmm. I could have been an idiot and kept going, well, God, you said that you would lead us and guide us and all these things and lead us from all these traps. And oh, there's tons of scriptures I could have stood on, like stupid people do, you know. It's like when you're believing for that, uh, uh, believing for that uh, promotion at work, when you don't even show up to work on time, you know, you don't do all your job and you're believing, you know, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. He said, yeah, he didn't say for the lazy. Come on. <laughs> Workman's worthy of his hire. That's what the word of God says. Work as unto the Lord. Come on. He was real specific on it. Lots of wisdom about how you're supposed to work, right? Lots of wisdom about how we're supposed to act in this world we live in and interact with it, right? When we line up with it, we get blessings. When we don't line up it, we get curses. But when you get more wisdom, you know, when I embrace that and said, you know what, I need to be a better witness for the Lord, and there's people watching me, and uh, I don't ever need to be in another courtroom again. And I made my mind up, and I have not. My sister Becky's there all the time, but you know. <laughs> if you don't know, she works. <laughs> 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 but how I many you know? I, I, it took so I, I read the scripture. I seen it. It took me a little bit, and that may sound simple, but it was something for me. And guess what? I started really getting to keep some money because that stuff's expensive. <laughs> I mean, that, that I wouldn't even want to think about it this day and time. That was 25 years ago. I mean, but how many have you have found when you got when you started applying some wisdom, it changed your life? How the storm you going through? And during that season, there was lots of things that happened. I think I've shared this one time. I got off work at the mines. I had a bodybuilder. I used to bodybuild. I know you can't tell it by now, but you know everything goes up must come down. So, um, <laughs> I'm in rare form tonight. Just to get it. Got off the work, and I had a bodybuild magazine in the back, and it had some kind of uh, supplement advertisement on it. And this cop pulled me over for no reason, and they were really upset because. I'm not bragging, but they, they wanted to throw me in jail for many, many years. They never could catch me. And then I gave my life to the Lord. I got cleaned up, straightened up. And so they wanted to throw me in jail. They felt cheated. that I They felt like I got by with something. Well, it was washed under the blood. And I was clean, sober. i have been working at the mines for two years. The scout pulled me over, and he wanted to search my car. And it's like the hundredth time they wanted to search my car. <laughs> I, it's like 3 o'clock in the morning. I've worked like a 16-hour shift. I just wanted to go home. And so I finally had enough. I said, no, you can't search my car. Get a warrant if you want one. He said, well, I got probable calls right here. That magazine has weed on it, and I can say that's probable calls. I can bust your window out and get in there. I said, do whatever you got to do, man. I'm not doing it. So then he got his boss in there, and then they tried to say that I was resisting arrest, and they arrested me and towed my car and searched it anyways. Of course, nothing was in there. I had a family member that had to come get me out of jail, which was humiliating again. But my family members, see, they knew me. They knew the man I was, and they always knew that I'd at least been honest about who I was. And they actually cleaned all their clothes and you know, all these cops. And they said, if you want to keep getting your clothes cleaned, you probably need to just leave him alone. Y'all have been on enough. He's a different guy. And they went off on him. Now, you know, from where I come from, it felt pretty good, right? But it took them a while. But to make a long story short, Fast forward a couple more years, whenever they had somebody that got arrested for certain things, I was the guy that called in. I went ahead, I sat on all kinds of special committees, committees and did things with the governor's office. And God just promoted me, so it changed. But there was a season that I had to, I recognized it and I had to walk through it and they had to learn. It didn't just happen overnight. Mm -hmm. Even though I had changed, some of that stuff was there. I had to keep putting good seed in the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm talking for somebody. Right? So, 
And then I went through some storms and man, the old me would say, what's the point of being such a good boy if I'm still going to have all this crap, trash? Mm -hmm. But let me tell you, I didn't, I didn't wear out during the storm. I held my, my peace, get my mouth shut and let the Lord fight my battle. I was not going to say that. No, oh. I said there's got to be a pony in there somewhere. Oh yeah, so I thought I thought so somebody thought I was going to. I got tongue tied, and I thought that was bad. I, don't know. I, don't know. I was thinking about what that almost sounded like. I was like, dear Lord. <laughs> but I was innocent in that. Well, that's not where we were going. Oh, either. good, praise God. <laughs> you know, so but I learned a lot through that storm. Are you with me? Yeah. And maybe that's you, and you're just learning. I'm going to tell you, you just keep persevering, keep getting more wisdom. And, keep going. and the devil will try to, if you just let him search that, you know, I'm like, well, if I tell him, then I'd still be there and then be searching it. Sometimes you got to put your foot down. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. I was a little off topic, but I feel like the Lord's using it for some of you in here tonight. I feel like somebody's getting something from it. So keep pressing in. Keep getting more wisdom. Keep getting more revelation for you that they're just in that place and God's going to help you through. Those that are eating on meat, I think I gave you a bunch of stuff earlier on that will help you. How many know that, that storms are on our, on our enemy? And I know what it's like to be weary. If that's you, just, just remember, we're going to start, we're going to be, after this study, remember, we're going to be studying the Holy Ghost. Y'all yeah, remember quite a few years back when we were teaching in depthly on the joy for the journey and how much joy was in the house? Yeah. We'll expect a magnitude of that by about a hundredfold. And that is what is coming. Yeah. That is what is coming. Yeah. But we gotta we gotta we gotta study and put some more put some more word in so that it's grounded so the enemy can't come and take it away so easily. Yeah. And we're gonna be doing that. Because we're still going to have storms to go through, but we're not going to have to go through them miserably. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in the Word of God does it say you have to be miserable going through a storm. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I refuse to. Right. Mm -hmm. And there's been a few times that I've almost felt like it myself over the last few years. Yes. You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a man's man, and when you got to just sit there like a nod and log and everybody do stuff for you, I can't think of anything more humiliating than that. But uh, for me, and of course, the enemy knew that. But how many knew? How many know that there's no season that lasts forever? No. And even when things look one way in the natural realm, there's all kinds of things going on in the spirit realm, and you got to keep your faith. And I know lots of you've been through lots of storms, you pastor. I got to pray and help you through a whole lot of different ones. But the world is about to go through storms that they don't even they don't even have any idea a clue that's coming that's about to shake them to the very core. Mm -hmm. right. And we need to be living our lives through them in a way that's going to point them to Jesus, point them to the joy of God, and help point each other that way so that we don't get uh, discouraged so easily. And and I, I encourage you to start start keeping better check of yourself. I do this. And I find myself so, yet, yeah, and I'm pastor, where I find myself uh, talking more about the problem than the solution. And I don't do it like what you're maybe thinking, but any talking to me is okay. And some, and some well, I don't even ask, let ask me how I'm doing. You know, I don't answer. I don't do those things. You know, but uh, the enemy always wants you to concentrate on the problem. Mm -hmm. Never the solution. Right. And to keep your joy, you've got to concentrate on the solution. Amen? Amen. Pastor Jim, if you'll come up and take the tithes and offerings that I forgot to take.